Okay, good morning. Morning, everybody. Thank you very much for being with us. Let me start uh, welcoming the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Thailand and current chair of the ASEAN, Don Pramud Winai. Thank you, Minister. It's a great, uh, great honor to receive you. Let me welcome to Mr. Hermono, Ambassador of Indonesia and Chair of the ASEAN Committee in Madrid. And welcome ambassadors also from other ASEAN countries, Vietnam, Mr. Dung No Tien, Philippines, Mr. Philippe Louis Jones, and Malaysia, Mr. Akmal Binche Mustafa. And my warmest, my warmest uh, thanks to the ASEAN Committee in Madrid for organizing this event with the Elcano Royal uh, Institute. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I only have five minutes for welcoming remarks. Therefore, I will present and support only one, but one extremely, extremely relevant point. Uh, the Spanish and the European appreciation of the stabilizing role that ASEAN plays both in Southeast Asia and in the Indo-Pacific region as a whole. A region that's becoming more and more important for all. Southeast Asian countries have enjoyed peaceful relations among them for the last two decades when ASEAN was open to all the countries of the region, regardless of their political system. Indeed, indeed, growing regional integration has reduced dramatically the political and security tensions that plagued relations previous, previously due to Cold War dynamics, but also to the legacy of the colonial era. In addition, ASEAN has been the backbone of regional cooperation in East Asia as a whole, both Northeast and Southeast Asia. Clear examples of the driving role played by ASEAN are the ASEAN Regional Forum, the East Asian Summits, and the East ASEAN Defence Ministers Meeting Plus. A few days ago, I was in Latin America discussing precisely regional integration there, and we learned that whereas interregional trade was just 20% of all external trade in Red Region, in Asia is almost 60%. Uh, almost as much as in the European Union. So, no doubt, no doubt, a great success. ASEAN has been able to play a great role, even if it's not the most powerful actor in East Asia, due to the growing, uh, strongly growing rivalry between China, the US and Japan. Those three powers have favored different schemes for regional integration, which led to a congestion of initiatives, quite frequently with different membership but with purpose, mandate, and, fun and functions frequently overlapping. By the way, as is the case in Latin America, don't follow, don't follow their example. The geographical framework of those initiatives is bigger than ASEAN, as Washington is pushing for a US-centered model of integration in the Indo-Pacific region, whereas Beijing pushes for a China-centered model in Eurasia, a project reinforced by the One Belt and One Road initiative. ASEAN, therefore, could face the risk of becoming relevant if it is not able of achieving a deeper level of integration than those alternatives. That would be a bad scenario, since it will leave regional integration vulnerable to big powers competition, reducing dramatically its own contribution to peace and stability in the region. In this connection, connectivity is essential, essential for deepening integration but most ASEAN countries suffer from a severe deficit in connectivity that cannot overcome with their own means. Thus, the European Union could and should be a partner in that task, supporting connectivity projects that are sustainable from a financial, social, environmental and climate perspective. This could strongly contribute to the prosperity of ASEAN countries and their partners, and also to regional peace and stability in a part of the world where the tensions between great powers are growing to worrisome levels. Thank you again for your interest. Now let me pass the floor to Mr. Hermono, Ambassador of Indonesia and Chair of the ASEAN Committee in Madrid for some other opening remarks. Mr. Hermono, the floor is yours. His Excellency, Mr. Don Pramut Binlai, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Thailand, Dear friends, ambassadors of uh, ASEAN countries and ambassador of New Zealand, thank you very much for your coming. Professor Emilio Lamo de Espinosa, President of Elcano Royal Institute, dear ladies and gentlemen, 
It is an honor for me, as chair of the ASEAN Committee in Madrid, to welcome you all to this conference on ASEAN-EU partnership, promoting connectivity for sustainability. We are greatly honored and grateful to have Foreign Minister Don, who is going to share his vision on strategic relations between ASEAN and Europe, as well as as recent development within ASEAN under tri Thai chairmanship. Today, we will also have the opportunity to analyze more in depth the relationship between ASEAN and the EU member states, especially Spain, focusing on connectivity. Therefore, we will be more cognizant of the strengthened cooperation between our two regions. I would like to express my gratitude to the Elcano Insti Royal Institute for its kind collaboration to organize these talks and for its constant commitment to shedding light on international affairs. Thank you for promoting a well-informed society able to have an influence on the decision-making of political leaders, institutions, and academics. I would like also to express our sincere appreciation to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs European Union and Cooperation of Spain for supporting this conference in order to have a well-rounded talks which includes the Spanish perspective on this matter. The ASEAN member states work together to enhance connectivity among our societies. In a globalized world that we live in, we have created different platforms to, to connect with each other and to create bridges that unite us. Now, ASEAN also desires to expand these bridges to Spain and European Union. It is our aspiration to, to use our capacity to connect and to improve the way we live, we work, and we travel. To do so, ASEAN has prepared the master plans on ASEAN Connectivity 2025. The plans aim to create a regional network where we can come together as one. A seamlessly and comprehensively connected and integrated ASEAN that will promote competitiveness, inclusiveness, and a greater sense of community. The master plans include in its vision the cooperation with other countries and international organizations such as Spain and the European Union. ASEAN aims not only to increase connectivity among its member states, but also to strengthen partnership with other relevant actors in the international sphere. As Indonesian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Her Excellency Ratno Marsudi remarked yesterday at the ASEAN Foreign Ministers uh, meeting, ASEAN and Europe should foster our connectivity, especially on quality infrastructure to promote sustainable connectivity. ASEAN is home of to 600 20 million people and its GDP has doubled in recent years to 2.6 trillion US dollar. ASEAN as one substantial market offers opportunity and potential for Spain and other EU members to connect. However, to promote sustainable connectivity between our regions, investment must increase. The EIB has estimated a shortfall in EU's Logistic, logistic that will reach 80.4 billion euros a year. The ADB has calculated that Asia Pacific needs 26 trillion US dollar investment in connecting infrastructure by 2030. Our master plan for 2025 focuses on five key areas, which are digital innovation, seamless logistic, regulatory excellence, people mobility, and of course, sustainable infrastructure. The connectivity that ASEAN wants to achieve must necessarily promote a sustainable and just society. That society must bear in mind as its guideline for action, for action the U, to the UN 2020 Agenda for Sustainable Development. ASEAN member states wish to increase its, its investment to improve our infrastructure and to connect people to people so that no one is left behind. 
while protecting the planet we want to leave to our future generation. Therefore, all ASEAN member states, along with Spain and other EU countries, must strengthen their partnership through different national, regional, and global mechanisms. The aim is to promote connectivity among nations for sustainability. Connectivity fosters security, stability, and mutual development. We must pursue ambitious plans that foster multilateralism and cooperation among regions in order to bring our peoples together and to create a connected and sustainable global society. Muchas gracias. Cop can come crap. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador. Uh, let me welcome uh, again our guest today, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Thailand, a foreign affairs expert and diplomat with a huge, huge experience. Let me just mention that uh, after studying at the Fletcher School uh, in UC Los Angeles, uh, he has served, among other places, in Bonn, London, uh, Switzerland, the Holy See, Beijing, the European Union, the United Nations, and finally Washington, before, before becoming, indeed, with uh, this ex extensive experience, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Thailand in 2015. He is going to talk about ASEAN European Union partnership promoting connectivity for sustainability. Uh, I don't know if we are going to have time for questions and answers because the minister has to leave by 11 o'clock. But if we can do that uh, after his speech, you can write down uh, questions and, and I will try to order them and, and, and transmit that to the minister. Thank you very much, the minister. For, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, and good morning to you all. Uh, it's a fine day. I woke up with uh, some good news and some not very good news. Uh, but uh, at any rate, um, very pleased to be here. Uh, but uh, my remarks to you would not be uh, And much longer than the two combined. Uh, but uh, allow me to first start with the uh, uh, congratulations to Spain uh, for hosting the ASEM uh, meeting, the 14 ASEM Foreign Ministers meeting, and uh, for providing support to the COP25, which is quite uh, crucial, that issue have happened as it did. <clears throat> uh, the ASEM, uh, which took place yesterday, uh, you, you probably all know that, uh, you know, we were talking a bit about that uh, in the holding room before we came over here, uh, was the blanchard, so-called, uh, of uh, one European and one uh, ASEM leader. They discuss about the possibility of enhancing relations, which has already been in the system then, in the ASEAN EU. But uh, there's a need to somehow merge the opinions uh, of uh, not just only the public, but also the private and the people sectors. And uh, they agree to to have such a meeting uh, between the two uh, regions, two continents. And Thailand was it, the middleman, so called. Uh, we were asked to be the host, and that was in 1996. Uh, 1996 started up the whole thing about the two regions. Uh, but before then, as I said, uh, ASEAN EU, or ASEAN EEC, uh, cooperation then uh, was very vivid still, uh, so much so that EEC then decided to have their office in the region, in South Asia. Therefore, back in 1978, the first EEC uh, uh, representative office, I'll say, represented by uh, Representative by ambassadorial level uh, was established in Bangkok, Thailand, in 
1978. So that was 41 years uh, that we have had formalized so-called the representation between the two sides. Um, and this morning, uh, allow me to, uh, as suggested you know, by, by the Committee of ASEAN here and uh, the uh, Agano Royal Institute that uh, the talk should be on the uh, connectivity which happened to be uh, one of the two main theme of yesterday uh, meeting. The theme of connectivity is one, another is the multilateralism. Uh, so I would, I would uh, uh, spend a little time on uh, promoting sustainability uh, here with you. Um, the, the talks which I, I, I have planned, uh, 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 it would be in two main parts, uh, put this way. Uh, one would be about ASEAN, uh, what ASEAN can bring to the table. Uh, that is the ASEAN visions on the connectivity. And the second part uh, would be dwelling on how, on the question of how, how ASEAN and EU can uh, translate such a vision uh, into uh, concrete action, which will help strengthen our overall partnership. So this is basically the, the ideas that I certainly would like to share with you. <clears throat> uh, as, as two of the world's most successful uh, regional organizations, ASEAN and EU, uh, natural partners, uh, as we all know, uh, because we have shared commitments to peace, stability, and <coughs> prosperity, which uh, was the core uh, uh, theme of our cooperation from the start. And this is where we took off by upholding international law, universal values, and rule-based international order. We know that greater connectivity between our two regions, whether physical, institutional, financial, digital, or at the people-to-people -people level can further enhance our partnership. Um, with this in mind, I can't help flashing my, my thoughts to the uh, synergy between the EU uh, connecting Europe and Asia strategy and the master plan, as uh, Ambassador has mentioned, the master plan of ASEAN connectivity in 2025, and also uh, one homegrown uh, concept, and that is the ASEAN connecting the connectivities approach, which uh, was uh, endorsed by all ASEAN while we were the chairman uh, this year. Uh, it was briefly introduced that I, uh, is, uh, our Thailand is chairman of ASEAN. Yes, all along uh, this year, from January 2019 up to uh, uh, 31st of December uh, is our chairmanship year. We, we have planned to host about 280 meetings uh, during this full course of one year. Our championship. But then, by the time that we have relinquished our championship, the de facto, uh, the jury, so-called, to Vietnam in November, when we finish off with our ASEAN summit meeting, we already reached about 300 meetings. So about 20 have been added on uh, in all dimensions, uh, big and small meetings. So the whole year, of one chairmanship would uh, would uh, I don't know whether the pre previous year would be as many as we we, we have encountered, but uh, it would be roughly about this. 
So uh, that would give you the idea as to how uh, busy and dynamic our region has been you know, under one chairmanship. Uh, now, uh, when we come back to the partnering of the, prom uh, of the sustainability, uh, it's the idea uh, then that uh, this sustainability uh, uh, is uh, very much our global uh, priorities of today. So we, uh, during the, time, the theme of our chairmanship, we, uh, we have very much dedicated to this uh, partnership for sustainability as a theme. And when we talk about this sustainability, we mean uh, is this uh, sustainability for all things, uh, SOT, a la IoT, the Internet of All Things. And this is uh, the sustainability in all dimensions, whether uh, political security, economic or social, while also fostering uh, concrete partnership within ASEAN and with the International Committee. Uh, I, I, in, on behalf of Thailand, we, we fully recognize the EU as uh, the first dialogue partner of ASEAN. Uh, which uh, has lent the support to this chairmanship theme and really appreciate the EU support in our efforts to support or to promote the SOT. Uh, we understand that the sustainability is not only one of the fundamental principles of uh, EU connecting Europe and Asia strategy, but also uh, very much an integral part of uh, the European Green Deal uh, as announced by the Commission uh, last week. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, allow me to just present you a picture of uh, sustainability, which we see it like uh, a two sides of a coin. One side is sustainable security, uh, and on the other uh, side is this dynamic economic growth and sustainable development. And both sides are complementary and reinforcing one another. Uh, now, it comes to me that I should uh, go a little bit onto uh, the two sides of coin by first introducing the first element, uh, and that is the promotion of uh, sustainable security. Uh, ASEAN uh, fuel the needs to reinforce strategy, strategic trust among ourselves and with our external partners. And the core principle of this particular point uh, on sustainable security is the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation in South Asia, uh, which is called, in short, TAC, or TAC, to which EU uh, is a high contracting party, and it serves as uh, regional norms for the conduct of uh, peace relations in our region. And these principles uh, can be further promoted across the Asia-Pacific and, and the wider region as well. Uh, apart from TAC, I certainly would like to introduce also, uh, in the light of this uh, rapidly changing geopolitical and political and geoeconomic landscape, the uh, ASEAN outlook on Indo-Pacific, which, which was adopted uh, in the summit, what we shared in, 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 uh, in June. Uh, we had two summit uh, uh, this year, one in June and one in November, and this outlook uh, was adopted in June. The outlook uh, uh, is ASEAN VISTA uh, on uh, promoting uh, regional peace and prosperity based on the principle of three M's, the mutual trust, uh, mutual respect, and mutual benefits. It also helps connect ASEAN with external partners uh, through the implementation of uh, practical win-win uh, projects in four main areas, uh, namely connectivity, uh, sustainable development, uh, economic cooperation, certainly the maritime uh, connectivity or di maritime dimension. Uh, ASEAN appreciates the EU support as well uh, for the outlook 
and certainly we look forward to the days when we can work things out with EU, you know, in that platform, the platform of the outlook. Uh, you already uh, in touch with us in the so-called the core platform of ASEAN as a dialogue partner, but uh, with that adoption of the outlook paper in June, it allows for uh, another platform which is much wider and presenting the global vista of ASEAN uh, in encompassing uh, these two uh, big oceans, the Pacific and Indian Oceans. Uh, so this is in a nutshell as to how the security uh, aspect of uh, sustainability is like. And the second uh, uh, point or component on the SOT is certainly the enhancement of uh, sustainable economic growth. Uh, like EU, ASEAN aims to strengthen our single market and enhance our economic relations with external uh, partners. At the conclusion of uh, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, uh, ASEP, uh, between ASEAN members and dialogue partners, uh, which is expected to be signed next year, 2020, in, in Vietnam, hopefully, because after seven years of negotiations, we have come to the point where we have concluded uh, all 20 chapters, necessary chapters, to be able to launch and the whole idea of ASEP. And this 20 chapter was completed in Bangkok, but then there were a number of other points which need to be uh, sorted out still uh, among ourselves and uh, 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 one of the um, main partner of ASEP. When I, men I mentioned the main partner of ASEP, uh, which is uh, a wide uh, regional uh, free trade area arrangement, uh, just to give you the idea that it's about uh, 10 ASEAN countries plus another six countries which are dialogue partners, and that is uh, China, Japan, Korea, Australia, New Zealand, and India. So the ASEP, once uh, it's launched, uh, will be one of the very big uh, 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 free trade uh, zone, uh, encompassing uh, a few billions of people. You know, uh, India is one. Point four, uh, China is about the same. So, and ASEAN itself is about 600 million. So this is uh, the idea as to uh, how we believe that uh, by the time that this is launched, it will be making uh, a certain impact uh, and and production and, and uh, to to trade arrangements, and certainly will be fruitful hopefully to all our partners. Now, ASEAN also welcomed the signing and ratification of development of bilateral FTAs between EU and ASEAN members. A number of ASEAN uh, countries have already engaged in the uh, bilateral EU. But then uh, we believe that uh, this bilateral uh, FTA uh, are the important building blocks uh, for the up and coming uh, ASEAN EU FTA which will open up uh, greater economic and trade opportunities for both regions. Uh, uh, I, I've been told by, uh, by uh, HRVP, uh, uh, Joseph Borrell, uh, yesterday, in fact, no, the day before yesterday when he called, uh, called him, that uh, the, the EU ASEAN FTA certainly will be on its way now with uh, the opening of this, uh, this uh, of discussion. But uh, the bilateral uh, between Thailand and EU uh, certainly is also welcome, and we are expecting to also launch the uh, bilateral um, Thai uh, and EU uh, uh, FTA uh, sometime in 2020. <coughs> and in preparation for the fourth industrial revolution and enhanced integration in our region, uh, 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 which allow us to pursue a digital and seamless ASEAN, uh, is also part of this uh, enhancement of the uh, economic growth or sustainable economic growth. Now, on digital ASEAN, we have promoted a digital ecosystem system to elevate our uh, people's standards of living and facilitate the development of digital economy. Uh, ASEAN can learn 
from certainly EU experiences and expertise, particularly in light of the increased economic activities uh, via online platforms and the need to ensure better safeguards from uh, cyber threats. Uh, we also welcome our cooperation with the EU uh, as uh, uh, reflected earlier in uh, the cyber security cooperation which uh, the two uh, parties adopted in August uh, this year. And on the seamless ASEAN, which was mentioned by, by, by Ambassador Amano, uh, the connecting the connectivities uh, approach, this will promote the synergies among the various connectivity uh, strategy and in related to the region, such as ASEAN Master Plan on ASEAN Connectivity 2025 and the EU Connecting Europe and Asia Society. Uh, adding on to that will be the China's Belt and Road uh, Infrastructure, uh, Belt and Road Initiatives, Japan uh, Partnership for Quality Infrastructure Initiatives, and the ASEAN Plus Three Leader Statement on the Connecting the Connectivities Initiative. So there are a number of uh, plans and schemes uh, lying around in the region, uh, which uh, we think it's time that we develop the practical ways to uh, create a better synergies between this EU Connecting Europe and Asia strategy and the Impact 2025, which is the master plan of ASEAN Connectivity, and the expeditious conclusion of the ASEAN-EU Comprehensive Air Transport Agreement will certainly enhance connectivity between our two regions and people. So this is in a nutshell as to how this uh, sustainable economic growth will be sustained uh, by a number of projects and uh, plans and, and, and ideas. And um, uh, I, I have already given you two uh, aspect of this SOT, but now I will come to the bigger picture of sustainable development, uh, which is ASEAN strategy priority and the, the important areas of uh, uh, cooperation of ASEAN EU plan on uh, 2018 to 2022. But this is the overall. We have had this uh, uh, action plan uh, 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 in the time frame of 2018 and 2022. Uh, we believe that this will be uh, a very good basis for our cooperation. And those cooperation which have already been uh, connected or, or, or launched, uh, uh, namely, the smart cities uh, uh, projects, uh, anything related to climate change, and also uh, the efforts to address the marine debris, uh, which support the ASEAN framework of maritime debris. It is something that uh, we have given uh, much importance to, particularly on the maritime environment. And uh, there is one other thing which uh, Thailand has spent past three years dealing very closely with, and that is combating the illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, uh, which is called in short IUU. And not only do we have been able to uh, sort it out with EU, uh, who is very, very concerned about uh, such uh, aspect in our region, but Thailand has been able to uh, utilize our experience uh, of our engage engagement with EU in creating or, or introducing the whole scheme to our ASEAN friends. So at the moment, there is this new scheme called ASEAN uh, Network uh, on uh, combating IUU coming up. And we have just host hosted this second meeting of uh, network of ASEAN on IUU uh, uh, not too long ago. I think it was last week. It was just last week. So uh, a number of good things are, are moving on. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, ASEAN uh, uh, has also mainstream uh, the sustainable development in our uh, regional development cooperation agenda. Uh, no, let, let me uh, figure out that we should we should uh, 
I think we should uh, also mention uh, one other thing which uh, uh, is considered to be uh, uh, to be very much relevant. I always have to add that. Uh, and that is complementarities initiative. Uh, because uh, when we conceive this uh, idea of sustainable development, we have in mind uh, the global agenda, the uh, UN uh, SDGs of 2030 global agenda. So we have uh, designed and conceived uh, a scheme for such uh, complementarities of both initiatives, the one of the so-called the umbrella, the one <coughs> global one of uh, the UN, and the one that is being practiced in us in region. So this complementarity uh, would need to be uh, brought forward uh, in 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 the form of a so-called complementarity roadmap, which would serve as a guiding. Uh, it's a guide for creating sustainable development cooperation in, in ASEAN as well. And on this, uh, the, uh, the idea which have been spread around need to be concretized. Therefore, uh, during our chairmanship, we have uh, come up with uh, the idea of creating ASEAN Center for Sustainable Development Studies and Dialogue, or uh, ACSDSD. Uh, a little bit long for uh, for an acronym, but uh, but that was launched again in November last in Bangkok uh, to promote the research and capacity building on sustainable development, uh, as well as providing a platform for policy dialogue on this uh, very important uh, issue uh, of global concern. Uh, this ACDSD is uh, is open to uh, to to all kind of collaboration with interested partners. Uh, we know that uh, here in Europe, uh, some, some, some uh, interests have already been shown, and particularly from the Commission, uh, Development Commission of EU. Uh, uh, we would be having uh, a meeting between the Commission and ASEAN. Uh, commission will be on behalf of EU, and ASEAN uh, will be represented by Thailand uh, uh, in, in, in this uh, meeting on sustainable development uh, in February 2020. So uh, I, I, I hope that this uh, has already given you the uh, whole idea, uh, concept of SOT, uh, both on security side and economic side and, and overall uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, interconnectivity of all plans, uh, plans of the uh, UN, plan of uh, a single country like China on Barron Road, or the Japanese, uh, or even the US, uh, and, and Australia and India, which is called the Quad, uh, Indo-Pacific uh, uh, Initiative Strategy. Uh, but Having shared uh, to you this ASEAN vision on SOT, uh, I should also, at this point in time, uh, present some final uh, ideas. Uh, these final ideas would encompass uh, three points. Uh, first, ASEAN efforts to promote the SOT uh, is to build resilience for all our communities and the region. Uh, this would be done in order to respond to the challenges uh, more effectively and better prepare for the future. And partnership of sustainability is a key, as clearly reflected in the ASEAN uh, uh, leaders' vision statement on partnership uh, for sustainability and the East Asia Summit leaders' statement uh, uh, of, on partnership and sustainability, uh, including the ASEAN outlook uh, on the Indo-Pacific. Uh, I also would like to uh, mention that along this uh, 
a line of resilience that will attempt or efforts to create altogether seven ASEAN centers uh, during the year 2019. Uh, those were launched and upgraded. Uh, they range from uh, the Center for uh, Cybersecurity Capacity Building, the military medicines, disaster uh, emer emergency logistic system, active aging to sustainable development, uh, all these uh, uh, concrete uh, centers which uh, are established uh, in, in, the, in the context of uh, SOT. <coughs> and in a nutshell, uh, they represent the ASEAN or Thailand contribution to ASEAN sustainable future to help ensure that SOT will endure and in this uh, uh, regard, we welcome the EU's concrete cooperation with ASEAN uh, through these centers, uh, uh, including the ASEAN Center on Sustainable Development uh, on areas such as climate change, uh, sustainable consumption and production, as well as a green infrastructure and connectivity. And the second point uh, after the resilience is that uh, EU should recognize that a stronger and more prosperous and sustainable ASEAN is certainly in the interest of EU. Uh, the enhanced connectivity is, is crucial, particularly in our cooperation on science and technology, innovation, capacity building, and knowledge sharing. Uh, connectivity is at various levels and fundamental to building of strong, open, and future-oriented ASEAN that's fully integrated uh, with the world. And in this connection, ASEAN is pleased to learn about the EU support for the ASEAN Catalytic Green Finance Facility under the ASEAN Infrastructure Fund. Um, and we also invite EU to invest in the 19 priorities ASEAN infrastructure projects under the Master Plan on Connectivity. And the World Bank has already identified as bankable with a high potential for immediate implementation. So the whole idea uh, is that very rarely that the uh, EU uh, would uh, fully and strongly and willingly to come forward, uh, to come to forward and, and contribute to any particular uh, uh, fund of any particular region uh, in the context of financing for a sustainable, uh, sustainable development. But in this case, uh, this catalytic green finance facility is very much in the focus uh, because of the, uh, the need to see the two regions connected uh, in, uh, under the plan of uh, the EU and ASEAN strategy and under your Green Deal uh, uh, work plan. Uh, so after this, uh, uh, the strength of ASEAN uh, sustainable ASEAN, uh, which should, should serve the interests of our EU, then come uh, to the third point, uh, and that is the both regions uh, should intensify uh, the uh, cooperation on all global issues. Uh, and this is crucial because such cooperation includes uh, very uh, much well-deserved attention climate change and also the issue of maritime environmental protection, uh, digital economy, and disarmament, and non-proliferation. Uh, transnational climate work could be included in this, uh, uh, countering terrorism, and violent extremism, uh, and responsible use of social media, among the others. These are the global issues which ASEAN and EU uh, should try to intensify our cooperation uh, to address all this concern. Uh, which has been uh, very much of, uh, uh, of global concern ladder. Uh, uh, this region, region partnership uh, um, uh, should uh, augment a global partnership uh, in strengthening regionalism, multilateralism, and a rules-based international order that contribute to global peace, security, and prosperity for all. Uh, let me reiterate uh, at this point that the importance of the ASEAN 
attached to our partnership with the EU in advancing our share investment is certainly based on its three M's, which I mentioned earlier. The three M is mutual trust, mutual respect, and mutual benefits. Uh, and it's clearly seen from our uh, long-standing partnership that together uh, we can do and achieve much more uh, for our region, our people, and the world. Um, but together, uh, we come to uh, a mutual understanding that we do not inherit this earth from our ancestors. We just borrow it from our children, and we must do the best for them. I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister, for this uh, wide, deep, and extremely ordered presentation. I don't know if we have time for some questions. Uh, do we? Let's try one. Let's try one? <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know if the writing system has been working or not. Do we have? Uh, yeah, we have. We do. <clears throat> Let's try one. May I have some of them? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is related to the COP25. It says as COP25 just finished with, with a disappointing result in the view of many, including United Nations General Secretary. <coughs> How can ASEAN and the EU work more closely together to tackle global climate change, uh, change challenge? Uh, I think uh, the climate change issue is uh, high on the agenda of all nowadays, not just ASEAN EU, uh, but countries in all regions, uh, particularly the uh, small states. Uh, island states, uh, uh, and Spain in particular, uh, as, uh, as illustrated uh, uh, last week uh, by your support uh, to the issue. Uh, 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 with the hosting or giving support to COP25 by playing host uh, on behalf of Chile. Uh, I think this is uh, very much a, graphic, uh, 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 a point which we all uh, uh, find uh, Spanish uh, access very noble and contributing uh, certainly a great deal uh, to uh, this key issue of uh, the world today. Uh, therefore, we must certainly, the ASEAN EU, uh, 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 intensify our cooperation uh, on this climate change, in particular, uh, through this uh, capacity building. Uh, we need to learn from EU uh, also in, 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 in engaging on this climate change, and as well as uh, on uh, certain technology transfer, uh, if that uh, uh, would be a good start for for the uh, attention on the climate change. And the Green Deal uh, work plan of the Commission uh, is certainly, uh, I happen to have this uh, very succinct introduction of the Green Deal. And uh, if, if you haven't seen it, uh, I, I, I suggest that you should look at it. Uh, uh, this infographic is is a key to the understanding as to where you are moving towards. Uh, so we we look at it and we thought and we believe that uh, we should uh, pay uh, very good attention to and work closely with you uh, in accordance with this plan. Uh, and that would certainly contribute uh, greatly also to our cooperation on climate change. And marine debris is one thing which I mentioned earlier about. Uh, uh, our efforts to uh, clean the ocean because 
Thailand uh, two years ago, we were the culprit of uh, this issue mm -hmm. because uh, uh, in our ocean, uh, in the neighborhood of our, our sea, uh, the, the debris were found in, in, in tonnage. Uh, that is, that is uh, very alarming for, for, for all of us. Therefore, uh, Thailand took particular interest in, in uh, working on this uh, marine debris, mm -hmm. and we have come up uh, with this uh, Bangkok Declaration in, on combating marine debris in, in, in the ASEAN region. Uh, uh, apart from uh, marine debris, uh, uh, we have also uh, uh, shared to the ASEM yesterday uh, the information about our uh, dedication to this uh, sustainable issue uh, by playing host to a number of activities uh, like uh, the uh, uh, workshop uh, on uh, uh, sustainability, marine sustainability and human capital uh, for sustainable digital uh, connectivity and next year we would have this uh, workshop uh, for ASEAN youth, ASEM youth uh, camp uh, in Thailand as well as the uh, seminar on the public health emergencies. Well, these are sort of things that we, we believe that uh, uh, are small acts on our own but that would contribute also uh, to, to the uh, uh, work, uh, our joint work plan of uh, ASEAN and EU 2018 to 2022, focusing on climate change. Uh, I also mentioned about the ASEAN Center on Sustainable Development, uh, which uh, was launched in November uh, in Bangkok. Again, that would be a center uh, for our close cooperation, the EU and ASEAN. ASEAN. Uh, on uh, issue relating to sustainable and certainly uh, climate change is very much uh, at the forefront. Uh, I also mentioned a while ago about uh, uh, this February uh, 2020 uh, meeting um, between the Commission, the EU Commission on Development and ASEAN, uh, uh, ASEAN with Thailand uh, uh, representing ASEAN. Uh, uh, this, again, would allow for uh, the identification of a number of uh, future projects uh, which the two regions should work out and, and not just only in the regions of the two, but also uh, in a wider context as well. Perhaps we could also even spread it to the uh, so-called uh, two big oceans we mentioned earlier about uh, Pacific and uh, Indian Ocean, and by so doing, that would allow uh, uh, the uh, participation contribution of EU in this part of the world, uh, not necessarily only uh, in the ASEAN, but uh, the uh, adjacent area, uh, in which will include all the Pacific Rim countries and in Indian Ocean Rim countries as well, uh, in different forms of uh, engagement. Uh, uh, including trilateral, say like Spain would like to uh, uh, join Thailand or, or Vietnam or Indonesia uh, in certain project uh, uh, on uh, so-called uh, marine environment with uh, uh, countries in, in the coastline of Africa uh, that is also possible. No, very much in, in accordance to this Outlook uh, platform. So this is a nutshell as to how we could uh, together contribute, uh, although insignificant in some ways, but it will be meaningful in some forms. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, I, I, I hope, uh, would uh, bring us to, uh, when I mentioned about Africa, uh, that would, that would uh, uh, allow me to also uh, refer to some African uh, uh, proverb 
grow up, uh, which says, and they very much uh, serious about it, and the Africans say, the world is not ours. The earth is not ours. It's a treasure we hold in trust for future generations, and together we can be part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I believe they have uh, taken uh, enough of your time uh, this morning uh, to sort of uh, review your understanding on ASEAN EU cooperation, particularly on this connectivity for sustainability. And I hope that, that there will be uh, future opportunities for uh, similar engagements, not necessarily have to be Thailand, but any uh, one coming from uh, the region at the ministerial level as well. I thank you very much again. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you.